Yeah, good morning. This is Bang Bang Ray Hill. Yeah, um, what, 78, 79, Owlsby YP. People keep asking me, and I've got my ear bit off. Well, I'll tell you how I've got my ear bit off. Why it's like that. It's through boxing as well as what happened to me, yeah. Um, I was on a place called F and G Wing in Owlsby, and the main wing, uh, there's a big, a massive big gym there. So now and again, we used to go over to F and G Wing, uh, sorry, to the main wing, play football, and bash at all the footballers. I mean, we was, F and G Wing was the governors, don't worry about that, mate, there's some big people, Malcolm Price, who could really fight, you know what I mean? Malcolm Price has got, I mean, he's, he's a legend in, in, in Wales, Malcolm Price, you know what I mean? And he, and he, and he was with me in my YP, so, you know, this guy could march on, you had all the Birmingham lot that could march on, and there's a lot of others in there that could really have it, yeah? Anyway, we used to go over to the other side and play football, yeah, and also play a, a thing called Murder Ball. Murder Ball, I don't know if everybody's ever played it, but in prison, we had a PTI called Joan, jo, Jones, Mr. Jones, and Rodwell, yeah, two PTIs. Jones was an ex-rugby um, player, uh, I think it was rugby, rugby league, uh, our players, rugby league players, you know what I mean? So, I mean, he... He was like um, mad on rugby, and he loved he loved violence. He didn't give a monkeys about violence. He didn't try to stop it. He just liked it. You know what I mean? Because that's what was the gym. Go to the gym to have a row, you know. And it'd go on for a bit of time, and then he'd stop it. But he'd never nick anybody. Johnson. Then I met Johnson later on in my life. I met him in the scrubs. Uh, he was in the PO in the scrubs. Uh, PTI now, yeah, we were like, it's just funny, and, and he, he remember me, all right, Ellie, yeah, how you going, mate? Anyway, so we used to go over to the main, and as they play football, we had lots of fights with footballers, a couple of bodybuilders over there, uh, Malcolm Price bashed up this bodybuilder, mate, bashed him up, you know, anyway, um, this particular time, we went over to the main, I went over to the big gym over there, and we played a thing called Murder Boys, I'll explain to you what it is, yeah? Uh, it's a ball where you get a medicine ball. Uh, you put it in the middle. It goes on a mat, yeah? You put it in the middle. One end's got one mat. The other end's got another mat, yeah? So you may have, maybe have eight to ten people that side, eight to ten people the other side. So you eight, eight from the main wing, eight us from F and G wing. And the idea is to, when he blows whistles, go and pick some medicine ball up, yeah? And run towards the mat. But obviously so, you get stopped because there's 10 there side, 10 outside, and they stop you in a way that it's, it's mur that's why it's called murderable. You know, like crash, hit you on the chin, bosh, do you the elbow, nut ya, and it was a mad sport. He loved it, Johnson. He used to love it. People come out there and nose you over the gaff and big cuts and their eyes and all that. He didn't care. It was a place you could let out all that steam, you know what I mean? They can really get into it, yeah? Uh, this time I, I've got the medicine ball and I'm running and this big black guy, he was huge, man. He was huge. He must have been training all his life. He was a big, big, powerful, powerful man. Six foot one, six foot two. Big, boy, big. And as I run, he come out and bang. He's more or less uh, knocked me out, yeah? So I'm on the floor and, and he's took the medicine ball and he's gone, yeah? They're trying to stop him, but they can't. He's put it on the mat. I'm shaking my head, and he has um, done the business on me, yeah? And he, he gone over, he's gone really, he's gone over the top, you know, the way, he's, the way he's hurt me, yeah? He's gone right over the top. So I thought to myself, okay. So I went back, we were, all got back together again, and I had to be careful, because I was all a bit dizzy and all that, and I knew he was going to come for me again. And anyway, I went on the other side, and I didn't want it again. And uh, anyway, um, it, we still had the fights and people smashing here, smashing there, elbows, crash. But he wanted me, mate. He, this big black guy, he wanted me, yeah? Because I was a big lad, I was in the powerlifting team. Uh, Tappy, Malcolm Price, he was over that side. He wanted that black guy and all. And Malcolm Price, <laughs> Malcolm Price chinned this guy, boy, this black guy. You know, and the black guy went on one knee, looked at Malcolm as if to say, right, you're going to get it, yeah? You're going to get it. So anyway, Johnson blew the whistle. It was all over. Uh, Johnson come over to us all, got us in a circle. He said, right. He said, this murder ball, 
is what it is, murder ball, yeah? You've all let out a bit of steam. Some of you have been hurt. Illy, you got hurt, yeah? All right, Malcolm Price, you knocked him, you, you, got, you, you hurt the black guy that done Illy, yeah? So the black guy's there saying, yeah, man, I ain't gonna get, ever get, gonna forget that, yeah? Don't worry about that. I, when we we'll play again, I'm on it, yeah? Malcolm Price don't give a care about this, this black guy, you know what I mean? He's only, he don't give a monkeys, mate. He don't give a monkeys. So when we're in the shower, the black black guy comes in, right? I want to, I want it, I want it bad off this black guy, mate, because he's took the liberty, really. I mean, he, instead of like murder, I mean, it's murderable, but he's gone a bit too far, yeah? So I thought to myself, right, let's get this guy. So also, crash, I've hit him, I knocked him down, he got on, he got on his arse, yeah? And I should have really steamed into him, really hurt him bad, but I didn't. I gave him a few more clumps here and there. And it was Johnson come rushing in because you know the, everyone's going, go on it. And, and, and Johnson come in. He said, right, stop it. You come here, you two. He said, no more of this, right? It's got to stop now. He said, listen, murder ball, right? So let your steam out. Not to start punch, how many fights in the shower, right? Stop this, yeah? Right? I'm telling you, stop it, right? And he, he, he was right on it, you know what I mean? So I thought to myself, right, I'll, I'll just leave it now. What's the point? Just leave it, there's no point. You know, Johnson's gone, leave it. So we left it. Uh, about two weeks later, um, we had playing football um, and all this, that, and the other. We keep going over there, but black geese is not about. Go to the gym. We've had a few other other games in the gym. The black geese is not about, yeah? So our wing, F and G wing, we got we get our canteen over there. They bring out they kept the tro big trolley and stuff over to over to our wing, and we have it in our wing. But this particular time, our our canteen was not coming over, so we had to go over to the main. We had to go over to the main wing. So we're going over to the main wing, uh, walk through walk through one of the main, this wing. As I'm walking through, I felt something jump. It, something got me around the neck. Yeah. And it's it, it this big black guy, man. You know, he dreads, it was massive, massive. He got hold of me around the neck. I thought he was going to kill me, he choked me around the neck. But not only did he that, he got hold of my ear, yeah? This one, he got hold of my ear, yeah? And sunk his teeth into my ear, yeah? Oh, mate, the worst pain. Pain was unbelievable, yeah? So because he was on my ear, biting my ear, I grabbed him, grabbed grabbed his, his, his groin, yeah? And squeezed his groin, really squeezed it, man. Squeezed it and he was screaming, yeah, screaming. Because now he's bit through my ear, yeah. My my, my ears hanging off, yeah. He's hanging off. So I've got his. I've got. And I don't care no more. He can do what he likes to me now. Because my all the pain in my ears going. He's just biting nothing really. Because my ears hanging off, yeah. So I've got him. I ain't gonna go, mate. I'm squeezing. He's screaming. All the screws come in, rushes in. They steam it, and in them days. They used to really steam into him, like with sticks, yeah? They, they steamed it in the rear and bashed his up, yeah? Uh, looked at me, uh, took me to took me to an outside hospital to Grendon Underwood, yeah? Drove me to Grendon Underwood at that, at, that, at that time. He was like just, he was putting a trust, yeah? A big trust he was putting. He didn't come to my hospital, he went to the main hospital at Owlsby, but I went to, I went to uh, Grendon Underwood, yeah? And Grendon Underwood is, is a prison for uh, psycho, psycho unit, psychopathic unit, all that sort of nut, nut nuts there. But the hospital, got a big hospital part there, yeah? Grendon Underwood Hospital. And it's still a prison. And they go in there, but a lot of them was having um, tattoos cut off, yeah? Yeah, there was that, they had a thing like a, 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 a this thing, it's cut all the, cut the tattoos off, and then there was uh, take the skin off their leg or their arse and put it on top of the where they just sort of take it off and leave it on there or bandage it all up and then when they take it off the the, the, the skin has healed onto the other skin it's like you know healed, it's stuck onto the other skin it's growing yeah but then they got a machine called a dermograder it's like a round thing and it dermograder it, it takes, takes all the old skin off, but it still leaves a terrible mark there, you know what I mean? It's not like it is now, it's different, laser, but this is the old fashioned way of doing it, and you should see some guys, I mean, not only, not only was they taking the skin off their arm, they were taking the skin off their leg, so it was wrapped up around their leg, wrapped up, there's all people walking about, you know, blood, smell of it, it's all everywhere, yeah? 
And I went there with my ear hanging off, yeah? And this surgeon in there, this, this guy that should do, your, do all these sort of things, I, he was, I'm not, mate, he had to be an animal. I don't know, I forget his name. He, had to, he, was a, he was an animal, mate. He hated convicts or some reason. I don't know, he just hated, he's just a really nasty person, yeah? And uh, he, he said to me that um, what I'm going to do, I'm give you anaesthetics in your ear and sew your ear back to, uh, to, to normal, yeah? He, listen, he never put no anaesthetic in my ear. I was screaming, honestly. I said, my ear, you haven't put no anaesthetic? Yes, I have, don't worry about that. You know, and he was, I was, honestly, I was so much in pain. On a really real, real pain, you know, I was screaming with pain when he kept putting the needle in, pushing it, it was, oh, really, really painful. And then he tightened my, he tightened the bandage up on my head, on it, so tight, I, I couldn't, my, my, I couldn't eat, my, it was giving me headaches all the time, like a mind, I was getting migraines, but it was it, it tightened up so much, yeah. And so what I decided to do, um, when I went back to um, my YP, Owlsbury, I still had the bandages on the left side and the other, and the pain had, the pain had gone, but I mean, when I took the bandage off, the, my head was bruised. I shaved on my head as well. My head was bruised, yeah, it was black and blue. But as I took the bandage off, my ear spun, boink, spun back. But it spun, I don't know what's happened, it sort of spun right back. And after the boxing, it's got like a cauliflower ear there now, yeah? But it spun back. And I thought to myself, you know, this geezer was an animal, mate. He was an animal, you know? And when I went back to my YP, um, when I took the bandage off, it spun back. People were laughing at me because all that pain I went through, you know what I mean? And me and Ma Malcolm Price, uh, Malcolm Price, like we got together. No, I mean, I don't think I've said this before. Me and Malcolm Price got together, um, went over to the uh, to the gym, to the main gym, and we was playing uh, a murder ball again. Uh, but the black guy wasn't about, yeah? He, he wasn't about, I was, like, I was gone or whatever, he wasn't about. So we're playing, we're playing it again, and we've had a few rounds with this main, the, the main lot again. We had a few fights. And what happened, me and Malcolm Price said to John, said to Mr. Jones, right, Mr. Johnson, sorry, Mr. Johnson, the PCI, right, can, can we go on the wing? Like, can we go on the wing and pick a team up to fight us in the murder ball? And he went, listen, he said, yeah, what I'll do, I'll take you to, to the wing and we'll go and see a people who want to f play murder ball with you lot and see if we can beat you because we're the, we're the governors at the time. So he took us to the wing, me and Malcolm Price took us to the wing uh, to go around people, because they're open they're a certain wing, certain parts of the association. He's going around there, he's saying, anybody want murder ball, want to play murder ball? Next week, come down, we took we'll talk with the particulars and we open them up for Grand Murder Ball. It's like proper, that's become F and G. Johnson loved his rugby and he loved that. I mean, you had a, we used to play, we used to play uh, football, yeah? And F and G had a big gate where you could walk through the gate, walk across the road into the field to play football. I'm not joking, mate. You'll never believe this, this prison was just crazy. Anyway, just go over there and play football as, as well, you know. Only like if you're only doing short sentences, well, I'm only doing three and a half years, so it's a short sentence. But anybody doing big bird can't go across the road, obviously. So you know what I mean. So anyway, we, we arranged all this murder ball, uh, uh, this murder ball, and this black geezer doesn't want to know, mate. He doesn't. We're trying our hardest to get this black geezer um, back again, murder ball, because Malcolm Price. We want to bash him up, so I brought Malcolm Price. Malcolm Price could have a fight, mate. I could have a fight, but Malcolm Price, he could really have a fight. And without a shadow of doubt, I would say F and G Wing, he was one of the governors over there, you know what I mean? With me, with the Birmingham lot, we just run it really as such, yeah. But we played we played um murder ball with a lot of this uh, uh from, from the main prison in Ellsbury, yeah. Mate, we ain't never got beat. We never got beat. I mean, we was like, like giving them, you know, and it was nice to let all that steam out. 
and, and I loved it. I loved the game, yeah. I loved it. Johnson loved me, loved me, loved uh, Malcolm Price, uh, loved the Birmingham lot because we didn't care, mate. We didn't care for nobody. We didn't care for nobody. And then after that, um, when Dave Stone, uh, David Stone, uh, a lifer, uh, killed somebody um, in a club, bashed them up or something, or stabbed someone, I suppose I don't know. He said he was not guilty. Uh, he worked in a metal shop. We all worked in a metal shop in it together. And uh, David Stone, he drew, he drove the forklift truck and loaded up all the metal, all the copper. Those are copper. We used to all the cables, yeah? And this particular day, uh, we all got together. And some, listen to me, right? On the main wing of some uh, geezers that are good work, good grafters, you know? Forget them. I'd love to know his name. There's one there. There's one wiry guy there. Uh, strong as they come, you know, it could really work this geezer. And we all got together and we said, look, you know, proper people, me, uh, Mickey Price, Mark and Price, me and this, about three or four other guys said, look, what we've got to try and do is, is Dave's, is, he's not guilty, mate, you know what I mean? We've got to try and get him, get him out of this place, you know, he's going to try and escape. He's driving the forklift, so if we can get the lawyers to come round so they can't see the, the wall and cause problems, he can go, mate, you know? So what we've done, we, we, tried, we, we had a big fight in the main, in the main uh, place where they do all the copper, you know, all throwing copper about, hammers about, everyone knows what's going on as such, but nobody really got hurt. There's a couple of guys that didn't know about it who got cable, the big cables across the back of their neck and all that came, you know what I mean? But no one... Dot, dot, getting stabbed to death by, by them blades and hit across it with a hammer. None of that shit, yeah. Anyway, calls murders, right? And Dave Stone's gone out there. He's loading, he's loading the lorry now with all his copper. He's gone out there. All the screws are running. Uh, the alarm's gone. All the screws are running to, 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 the, uh, to the cable shop, <coughs> which is not far from the wall. Dave Stone's on, on the forklift truck. Drove up to the wall. No fences in, mate. Drove up to the wall, but it had gone. Um, when, I was, when I was doing my Big Bird, um, I read the, picked the paper up one day, and they got, caught David Stone in Manchester. Uh, he was running a club, or he had a club. He had a fight on the door with some people, and um, one of them got seriously, seriously, seriously hurt. Uh, they come in, David Stone has changed his name, obviously, so, you know, come in, uh, took him, took him to the police station, with some other people, and um, when they took it to the police station, they took the fingerprints and this, that and the other, you know, and when they took his fingerprints, they found out who he was, David Stone, you know, and he was uh, wanted, and he was wanted for escape, escape from Malmesbury Prison, and then he got, he got back, yeah, he's done a life mate, you know, and they put him back in there, um, and then he, they got nicked for this, and they couldn't get nothing for the, for, for the fight, and all that, but the guy nicked them, you know, that's why he got put in, uh, he, he got took to, uh, Man uh, what was it, Manchester uh, Police Station, I don't know what station it was, but they took his fingerprints and all that, and, uh, you know, and then it come on top, how about that, mate, that's terrible, been out all in years, been out about 20 years, you know what I mean, and then gets a life, uh, got to go back and finish his life sentence off, so whether or not what happened to Dave, I don't know, uh, never heard nothing about Dave, um, me, Malcolm Price, uh, a couple of others, we got made up to a star. Uh, we, we, you know, I mean, we was getting we was getting a bit too rowdy, too big, we, really. Owlsby really couldn't cope with us, so they made us up. Uh, they made us up. We went to the scrubs. Me, Malcolm Price, a couple of other guys went to the scrubs. I don't know where Malcolm Price went to, but he just disappeared. He went, went, I don't know what wing he went on to, but he just disappeared, mate, and I never see Malcolm again. The next time I see Malcolm Price was um, when I got the book called Street Fighters from Julian Davis. I got it, well, what is it, 02, 03 I got it. Um, and I couldn't believe it, mate, when I was going. And, and I've only just about, what, a year ago, year and a half ago, See it, see him, Malcolm Price, in it. And I went, oh my God, 
You know what I mean? I think it's because um, Matt Legg uh, done, a, done a thing on Malcolm Price. I told him about Malcolm Price. He, he said, yeah, I'll do a, a story on him. But he, he really done a good story. Fantastic. Going back all them years, you know. And, and then I couldn't believe it when Street Fighters was mentioned and he was in it. All them years I've had the book, since 02, 03, I've had that book, yeah? And I've never ever uh, looked at it as Malcolm Price as being in it. And when I see it, I couldn't believe it, mate. You know, me and him, go back, I don't know if he's dead or whatever. Um, I think he may be. But Malcolm Price, mate, was a proper, proper hard man. He was my mate, he was my pal, yeah? But uh, when he bashed that black geezer up as well and knocked him Sparko, you know, that's what I always go back and put the keys a bit more off the black keys. Fair play with him, mate. Fair play. Um, you know, we had a fight, proper fight, and he'd done it. He'd done what he was going to do, he bit my ear off, and that's how I got my big ear. Also, obviously, I got it through fights, boxing. He, you know, made it a bit more, you know, a bit more out a bit, you know, but uh, yeah, yeah. This, uh, the guy the guy could have a fight, the black guy, and uh, he, he bit it off, mate. Fair play to me. Anyway, Bang Bang Rail. There's big stories about Owlsby. Um, I haven't got really time to do all, all, all the stories. I'm going to do some more stories about Owlsby that I haven't really said, spoke about before. I don't know if I spoke about the block, this, that, and the other. No, I think I did. But more so about the block and, and this, that, and the other. And Mr. Stone and Mr. Bishopton who run the block and, uh, and, and, and the train robbers. And all the women out there, and the death place, the death place was to hang them. Yeah, mate. Let me tell you about this later. Yeah, this is Bang Bang Ray. All please press the like button, subscribe, and good morning. Yeah, bye. -bye.